So you're building your application and it's just slow and you want it to be faster. Well, then this is the right video for you because we are looking into TPL, the Task Parallel Library, which allows us to use parallel programming in C Sharp and .NET, which allows us to run multiple tasks at the same time and in turn makes our applications faster. So let's get started and make your apps so much smoother and faster and let's go. Before we jump into the code, let's take a moment to understand what we're dealing with here. The Task Parallel Library, or TPL, is a set of types and APIs in the system threading and system threading tasks namespaces of .NET. But what does this really mean? Well, in simple terms, TPL is a tool that makes it easier for us to add parallelism and concurrency to our applications. Now, those are some big words, but don't worry, I'll break them down for you. Let's imagine a real life situation to illustrate this. Think about a restaurant kitchen during dinner rush. The chef doesn't chop vegetables for a dish, cook them, serve them and then start over for the next dish. That would be incredibly slow and inefficient. Instead, multiple tasks are happening at the same time. One person is chopping vegetables, another one is cooking, someone else is serving the food and another person is washing the dishes. This is the essence of parallelism doing multiple things at once to increase speed and efficiency. Now, our computers work in a similar way. Instead of a kitchen, we have a processor, and instead of cooks, we have threads. By using TPL, we are essentially turning our single cook kitchen into a bustling restaurant kitchen, and that can make our applications faster and more responsive. But enough of kitchen talk, let's get back to coding. The basic building block of TPL is the task. You can think of a task as representing some work that should be done. The task doesn't know what other tasks are doing. It just does its job. Let's look at this example here. In this code snippet, we create a new task that prints task is running to the console. The task doesn't start running immediately after it's created. We have to explicitly start it using the start method. It's like hiring a new chef for our kitchen. They won't start cooking until we tell them to. If we want to this line in our console, we would need to add a task.wait line so that we let the program finish the asynchronous task. And then, now if we run this program, we will see the output task is running printed to the console and that's our task running. But before we dig deeper, go ahead and check out our full stack web developer masterclass where you learn Angular and ASP.NET and how they are connected to each other. It's a self-paced online course that teaches you in-depth ASP.NET Core, Angular, unit testing, and even C-Sharp software design pattern. We offer a 30-day money-back guarantee, but I'm absolutely sure that this is the fastest way on how you can progress as a developer. So go ahead and check it out. You can find the link in the description below or popping up right now at the top right corner. So now we know how to create and start a task. But the real power of TPL comes when we start running multiple tasks concurrently. This is where the parallel class comes in handy. This class provides us with a set of static methods that we can use to easily run multiple tasks at once. It's like our restaurant manager who coordinates all the chefs to work together efficiently. Let's look at an example using the parallel.4 method. In this example, we're using the parallel.4 method to print the numbers 0 through 9. Each iteration of the loop is a separate task that can run concurrently with the others. This is equivalent to having our team of chefs each preparing a different dish at the same time. When we run this program, we should see the number 0 through 9 printed to the console. But notice something interesting. The order might not be sequential. That's because the tasks are running concurrently, so they might not finish in the order they started. This is a key aspect of parallelism. Tasks run independently and can finish at different times. Now, let's take a deeper dive into parallel tasks. Imagine you're a photographer and you need to apply a filter to a large batch of photos. In a sequential world, you would apply the filter to one photo, wait for it to finish, then move on to the next photo, and this could take a lot of time. 
But with TPL, you can start applying the filter to all the photos at the same time. This is like having multiple photo editing software instances running simultaneously, each working on a different photo. So instead of waiting for each photo to finish processing one by one, you could potentially finish the job in a fraction of the time. But what happens when things go wrong? Well, in the world of parallel programming, multiple exceptions might occur at the same time. To handle these exceptions, the TPL uses the aggregate exception class. Let's take a look at how we can handle exceptions in a parallel loop. In this example, we throw an exception when i equals 5. Because we're in a parallel loop, we catch the exception with an aggregate exception. This allows us to handle multiple exceptions that might have occurred during the execution of the parallel loop. It's like having multiple chefs in the kitchen making mistakes at the same time, but our restaurant manager, the aggregate exception, keeps track of all these issues so they can be addressed all at once. After we run this code, we will see numbers printed to the console until it reaches 5, at which point an error message will be shown. This demonstrates how we can catch and handle exceptions that might occur in our parallel tasks. Alright, that should clear it up. With that, we should have had a comprehensive look into the task library in c -sharp and .NET. We went from understanding what TPL is, to creating tasks, running tasks concurrently and handling exceptions. It's a lot like managing a busy restaurant kitchen and just like in our kitchen, we need to keep an eye on everything to make sure it's running smoothly. Just remember, parallel programming is powerful, no doubt, but always measure performance to ensure that the cost of parallelism is not greater than its benefits. I hope you found this video about the task parallel library helpful. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment below. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe so you don't miss out on our future videos. And as always, happy coding.